Okay. Here's the one that no one will have the answer to. Everybody thinks they'll have the right answer to it, and everybody will be wrong. That doesn't mean I'll be right. <laughs> um, photographic art. Someone was displaying some artwork from a photographer I won't mention. Uh, the graphic arts, and I did say graphic arts instead of photographic arts, are incredibly brilliant and whimsical. Um, you know, the question then becomes, when we're talking about uh, photographia, writing with light, and uh, where is the dividing line between graphic arts? You see, the word photos, or light, is not in there. Is there a certain percentage? I mean, you think if it's over 50%. Now, we're not talking about dragging into the light room, which is no different than uh, what I used to do in the dark room, and, you know, dodging and burning, or pushing or pulling, um, changing exposure values, try to squeak out every last stop of tonal range. We're not talking about that. That's perfectly fine. What we're then doing is uh, we're playing with the putty that defines the composition of the photographic uh, shot but not adding to it or sticking glitter and you know uh, remember when you're a child you had play-doh and you like stick little figures in it or whatever <laughs> so we're not actually talking about what is already present and stretching it and pulling it and I could talk about uh, art theory all day long but every time I make a video on art theory everybody goes <laughs> I wrote a video on uh, wrote a video <laughs> I can't believe I said that. I wrote an article on art theory. Uh, it was uh, published in uh, Adar Noir uh, a few months ago on uh, art theory. Uh, it seemed to be well received. Um, in the midst of studying metaphysics, um, we have to deal with the art theory of uh, you know metaphysics and symbolism and whatnot. So incredibly well studied in art theory, believe it or not. Um, so then the question becomes... Nothing like playing with Velcro near a microphone, right? The question then becomes is what's the dividing line? You know, it's, well, it's it's art, taking a look at uh, many of those pictures, and we're not here to single anybody out, but I mean, are we looking at photographic art? Because we're not talking about the piece of uh, dough, the composition that was shot. We're not talking about stretching it as far as tonal range and... Um, a little dodging and burning and uh, suppressing specular highlights in Lightroom, which is no different than the crap that I used to do and, and what is done with film in the darkroom. So we don't have to talk about that. We're talking about stuff that where the fundamentally the light that is reflected back to our eye was uh, never there to begin with. It was added, subtracted, or whole things uh, pieced together like a collage. Now... It must be said unequivocally that no one is interested in truth in photography. You know, when you do a wedding, uh, you know, the bride wants uh, that gigantic zit on the end of her nose photoshopped out. They don't want to print it. Well, that's reality, you know? You got a big old zit on the end of your nose, honey doll. Well, I don't want to see that shit, you know. Nobody's, you know, unless it's war photography, photojournalism, but even photojournalists have uh, been known to uh, cheat like hell. Um, when it came to the shot. And any time you crop a shot, too, I mean, that's cheating. You know, if there's something that horribly conflicts with the shot. But nevertheless, we're still talking about the shot, even if it's cropped. So the dividing line will never, ever be agreed upon by you or me or anybody else. But A, nobody wants reality in photography. Unless it is something that fundamentally denotates reality, war photography, photojournalism, so on and so forth. That's understandable. That's the unwritten law of uh, photographic arts. Writing with light. Crop okay, dodge and burn okay. You know, change your speculars, pull out the shadow detail. You know, all that stuff's fine. However, it sometimes becomes too heavy, too much, over sharpening. Uh, nevertheless, though, you're still stretching and molding the putty. So while we can't agree upon a dividing line as far as percentage of like, well, now it's not photographic arts anymore, it is graphic art, it, it can be agreed upon that denotatively and uh, subjectively, the point at which we're talking about graphic art is where we take the uh, shot that has been taken and we're not stretching it or pulling it anymore. We're sticking 
you know, little things in it and sprinkling glitter on it and you're taking some like other colored putty and slapping on there and you know now we're talking about graphic art that contains photographic elements within it so and I said you know where's the dividing line ultimately photography is a very simple it works exactly like field theory um, Someone that's really studied in metaphysics, art theory, and field theory, a la magnetism, electricity, and so forth, all of that stuff is so absolutely interconnected you wouldn't even believe it. Everything that defines good photography is the same way fields and forces and electricity, magnetism, dielectricity work. It either pulls you in, okay, we're talking about centripetal convergence, it pushes you away like a horrific war photograph, or it stops you. Deceleration. Everything that defines like wood and electricity and the shit that runs this computer and my camera, capacitance, resistance, permeability, permittivity, also defines the fundamentals of art theory. It pulls you in, it pushes you away, or it stops you, or a combination thereof. Yeah. Oh my god. Why don't you think about that for a second? That is so absolutely true. No one else has ever said that except for me. No, no one else has. Why don't you go try to... I love it when people, when I say something in videos, like, you're not the first person to say that, and then they'll, like, quote me something that is totally unrelated. And like, wow, yeah, I... <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I love it. People do that all the time, especially on magnetism. They're like, oh, no, so-and-so discovered first, and then they'll give me a quote that is totally no connection at all. I mean, there isn't even the slightest hint of anything I said. It's like, yeah, see, there they, they discovered it first. Like, no, no. Now, <laughs> so, is it graphic art, or is it something that uses elements of photographia within it? You know, when we're talking about graphic arts, then we're talking about something where the, uh, the photograph is only a wire framework for an idea. The cosmos nuitos, the idea. Um, uh, to build upon a final product to be constructed in Photoshop or another drawing program. Taking a photograph, for example, you you use the framework, you add everything, and it looks like something from, you know, Lord of the Rings or something. You like take some sort of beautiful woman, for example, and give her hobbit ears and like throw some glitter in her eyeballs and give her snake eyes and that like makes the new cover of a uh, of a uh, Dungeons and Dragons, like a new novella. It's like, wow, I could see that used to be a photograph. There's like, there's something in there that used to be a photograph. <laughs> That's graphic arts now. So, while we can never agree upon a percentage or a dividing line, we can certainly say that once we have the, the ball of uh, silly putty, remember that stuff, silly putty? You can actually... You take the silly putty and you. I need to order some silly putty. That's so really good analogously. You take silly putty and you roll it out on the newspaper, which nobody reads newspapers anymore. And you peel it back and you'd see, because the ink would stick on there, you could see the image on the silly putty. And young little kids would like stick a toy soldier in the silly putty. Yeah, the silly putty is the photographic work. And, you know, once you stuck a toy soldier in there and rolled it around in some glitter. <laughs> now we're talking. <coughs> now it's. Graphic arts. Graphic arts. It's not really photography anymore by strict, hardcore denotation. Connotative is like, oh, that's the last nice photograph. People are so used to seeing bullshit. Uh, excuse me, nonsense. And nobody's paying for reality. You know, they want their eyeballs pleased. It's kind of like when you see a commercial. They stick in a bunch of pretty people and really nice weather and perfect lighting. That's not reality. No. Because reality doesn't sell too well. Except for certain things. Like when the guy was being yanked out of a seat on United Airlines and everybody had a cell phone camera and they were filming that poor uh, uh, Asian dude, the Vietnamese guy, like getting yanked and like brutalized. You know, that's reality. People are like, oh my God, I'm never going to fly United again. Those SOBs. That's something different. In general, however, the generalization is true, while not specifically true, since photography is a huge spectrum. Nobody pays for reality and photography, but we have to differentiate out photographia from graphic arts. Okay, did I make that clear?
I think I made it very clear, much more intelligently and succinctly with much more wisdom than anybody else could pull off. It's certainly more so than I've ever read on a book on art theory relational to photography. These people, these idiots, these PhDs, and these idiots writing about, you know, takes them 400 pages to say the basically the same thing I just got done saying in about nine minutes. Anyway, if you like this video and drop a buck or two via the link below because I actually suffer my butt off making uh, videos. Uh, it's not the videos that take so much time, it's the answering of the comments and the emails. And I can tell you what, if you knew what it paid, it's next to nothing. It's, it's like flipping burgers. It's less than flipping burgers. Pretty sure the guy spent so many years in college, which doesn't really mean anything at all, and uh, so well-educated, deserves to be paid at least something so he doesn't have to like buy you know, when I went to the grocery store yesterday, I was like, you know, I would love to buy a salad and fruit and vegetables, but that crap is too expensive. I do that all the time. <laughs> I love salads. Yeah, the fat guy likes I do like salads. I don't eat sweets and ice cream and crap like that. I uh, actually like eating salads, but I go, they're like, damn, it's so expensive to buy a salad. Really? One of the main reasons Americans are so fat, and it's like, well, you know, it's my own fault that I'm fat, I know that, is because crap food is cheap, and really good food is expensive, especially people that live in urban areas. This is another reason why I should move back to Florida, because down there is the exception. Really awesome food is really damn cheap. <laughs> but I digress. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, adios, do svidanya, hasta luego, and uvidimse, and as they say in Russia. Bye. Ba da ba da ba 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 da ba da ba ba da ba da ba.